Now there's one final principle I want to highlight before we start moving through history again, and that's something called the Hegelian Principle. Named after philosopher George Hegel, it is one of the most important ideas behind Darwinism and it can be summed up by the idea that life evolves to harmony through conflict. That's harmony through conflict. That in any given situation there is a light and dark, positive and negative, that clash with one another to create a peaceful outcome, which is a mixture of the two. To put it another way, on one side you will have a thesis, and then directly opposed to it you will have an antithesis. As the two come into conflict with one another, the inevitable result is a synthesis of the two. So very simply, thesis v antithesis leads to synthesis. Hegel was a pantheist who believed that you could see this happening in nature all the time. Freemasons and occultists everywhere believed that this basic principle could then be used to help bring about a singular one-world order. As I mentioned previously, one of the mottos of the Illuminati is, Order out of chaos. Like eugenics, they attempted to artificially advance a process that they believed was already happening naturally. Because the goal of Satan was to reverse the scattering and fragmentation that had happened in Babylon to return the world to a singular system, the idea was to keep clashing opposing ideologies together to create conflict which would eventually lead to peaceful solutions and unity, or synthesis in other words. Do this over and over and over, and with the passing of time, all ideas would converge back into a single point. So the idea of the Illuminati was to deliberately set up opposing ideas to one another in the knowledge that the conflict would eventually cause the two to compromise and reach a middle ground. British politics is a great example of the Hegelian principle in action. Originally there was a left-wing Labour Party and a right-wing Conservative Party, and they were very distinct and stood for very different ideas. Through the years of rubbing them up against each other, however, they have both now compromised and gradually moved into the centre ground, to the extent that the British public now has no real choice at the polling office. They are voting for basically the same ideas and the same party dressed in different colours. It's partly through the Hegelian principle that the world is gradually homogenising and separate cultures are beginning to merge into one another. Sometimes the homogenization occurs naturally as the world gets smaller, and sometimes situations are deliberately manipulated and conflicts created to aid the progress towards a one-world order. Of course, where conflict between two opposing ideas is necessary to create a synthesis, bloodshed and violence has been encouraged by the elite. Remember the Jesuits talked about stirring up conflict in places where there had been peace to further their cause. It's the same idea. The end justifies the means. From the conflict of World War I, for example, there came the League of Nations, which was a synthesis, an attempt to join countries together in unity for peace. Similarly, after the conflict of World War II, a synthesis was created afterwards in the United Nations, which exists to this day. We'll look at that more later. Wars are a win-win situation for the elite because they don't have to fight them personally, they help keep populations down, which is one of their main aims as we have already seen, and commercial enterprises often make a lot of money from them at the expense of taxpayers. And now, having taken the time to establish the principles of the Enlightenment and what they set out to achieve, we look at their first attempt at overthrowing monarchies and destroying Christianity, the French Revolution.